Alright guys, I am back from New Orleans where I watched WrestleMania 30. This was my first live WWE show and it was a fantastic experience. Walking into WrestleMania 30, the presentation just blew me away. And we went to Fan Access on Saturday morning, then we went to the Ring of Honor taping, which I'm going to do a separate video on that, and then we went to WrestleMania 30. And just walking into Fan Access, you you don't really grasp how big this company is until you go to a big show like this. Even people like myself who have been watching damn near their entire lives, walking into fan access, you see just how big the WWE really is. And I was just dumbfounded, honestly. Um, so starting with fan access, we got to fan access and we're walking through the convention center to get to the actual like area where all the booths and stuff are set up. And you walk in and they never scanned our tickets by the way. You could pretty much just walk into fan access apparently. Uh, but they have this area where they have these huge banners showing different WWE superstars. I'm talking your normal guys like Cena, Batista, Lesnar, Taker, but then they had banners for Kali, Eva Marie, people like that. But even those people, you just had this sense looking at these huge banners that they're superstars too. It was like gladiators is the vibe I got from it. You walk through this aisle and you see these huge banners scattered around and it's like these people are like modern day gladiators, like superstars up here. So it was just a really intense thing to actually see this in person having watched the show my entire life and then going and seeing like all of this stuff firsthand like the WWE machine in motion actually seeing this just kind of blew me away so you walk through the shop tons of merchandise everybody's buying something I actually didn't buy anything uh, but there was just oh my god people with their kids and they were buying all this stuff for them they had a booth set up for the I think it's Slam City is what they're calling it and then like the Lego stackers or whatever just all of this stuff just so much freaking stuff and they had like the money in the bank ladder where you could act like you're climbing up to reach the briefcase and it looked kinda silly because you can only put your foot on one rung and the lady was like yeah just put one foot there so I just when she turned around I just did like two <laughs> so it didn't look quite as silly uh, but then she was saying something about people following the rules I don't know who cares what are they gonna do uh, but anyway so they had all the superstars there signing autographs I was there for the Daniel Bryan Hulk Hogan signing so you can imagine the number of people there but it wasn't just like people lined up for Hogan and Daniel Bryan people were lined up for 3MB for David Otunga, I mean, it was ridiculous. I saw Damian Sandow, NXT guys had lines. It was just, oh my gosh, so crazy. So, me and my friend decided that instead of waiting in line for one guy we wanted to see, we were just going to walk around to the side and take pictures of them, like from a distance. We didn't really get to meet them, but what the hell, we got the picture. And they had a ring set up where people were doing impressions of wrestlers. One guy did an awesome Santino. Another guy sounded just like Road Dog. They had an Ultimate Warrior impression. Um, then later on, Shawn Michaels came out for a Q&A. So me and my friend were already over by the ring. And when they said Shawn Michaels, I thought it was another guy coming out doing an impression. But it was Shawn Michaels. And he was right there in front of me doing this Q&A and as soon as he came out people rushed the ring it was just awesome stuff uh, so we saw the museum and <laughs> there was something very sad and that was the heroes for hire I think that's what's called hire heroes whatever that thing is with the military that WWE is doing 
That was very sad because that booth had nobody. It was just the one guy sitting there. And it was really depressing. And then next to him was the Be A Star booth, and there was, like, nobody there either. But it, for some reason, it wasn't quite as depressing as the Heroes for Hire thing. So anyways, we went through the museum, and they had, like, the Andre the Giant statue, uh, Bruno San Martino statue. If you check out the Facebook page, I've already put a lot of photos up from the fan access and the other stuff I saw. Uh, so we walked through the museum, and it was pretty cool. And we did Undertaker's Graveyard, where they have all the tombstones set up. And my friend actually said something after we watched WrestleMania 30. And he's a casual fan. He doesn't really know a lot about WWE or the history or anything. But when Undertaker lost, he was really disappointed because he was just getting into it and he instantly liked Undertaker. That was like his guy. So after WrestleMania 30, he said, you remember how we were walking through the museum? And I said, this is kind of small. You would think they would have more stuff here. Undertaker's graveyard was bigger than the museum. And that's true, and that just goes to show you how important The Undertaker is to the WWE. The Undertaker's graveyard is bigger than the freaking WWE Museum of Fan Access. So, anything else from Fan Access? Um, I'm trying to think of some more booths and stuff. They had, like, a guy painting these pictures of wrestlers, things like that. Um, but, yeah, that was pretty much it. We walked around took pictures of the wrestlers, I uh, took a video of the Shawn Michaels Q&A, um, really just his entrance though, not like the actual Q&A, and uh, yeah, that's that's pretty much fan access, but they never scanned our ticket, so you could basically just walk into that thing. So then we went to the Ring of Honor taping, then Sunday night we went to WrestleMania 30, and as soon as I walked, talk about a madhouse of people. First of all, this place was packed. And there were people like dressed up as wrestlers outside the building. So you had like Hulk Hogan, Roddy Piper, um, stuff like that. You walk in, just a crowd. If you don't like big crowds, do not go to any WrestleMania or probably any WWE event. This is um, a lot of damn people. It didn't bother me though. And we got our seats. We had really good seats, I thought. And as soon as I walked in and I saw the stage, I was just, this is the coolest thing I've ever seen in my entire life. That's what I thought. I was like, I cannot believe this. This is the coolest thing I have ever seen. So, <laughs> we sit in our seats, and it's me and my friend, and I met this other guy there who knows a lot about wrestling, he reads the dirt sheets and everything, so I talked to him throughout most of the show, really cool guy, um, and our seats were kind of like, here's the stage, there's no way I can explain this on a video, but it was like the stage, the ring, the announcers, and we were back to the corner over here, um, facing the hard cam. So I don't know, I put a picture on the Facebook page from my seat if that helps. But anyway, the show starts, Hulk Hogan comes out, and he's talking, he screws up, Silver Dome, we all know about that by now, and he's talking about WrestleMania moments, how you're going to have all these WrestleMania moments, and then I actually sat down, me and the other guy sat down, we were all sitting just watching the monitor at this point, because Hulk Hogan's just, you know, opening the show, and then Austin's music hits, and we both just shot up. That place popped like crazy. It was so awesome. And then Austin comes out, and then the freaking Rock comes out. So the Rock comes out, they cut these promos, they do all their catchphrases. It was just the shit, man. Um, a very just epic moment to start WrestleMania 30. And that was actually, was that after the pre-show? I guess it would have been after the pre-show. So I did see the pre-show match with the Real Americans, the Usos, Los Matadores, Rybaxel, and that was pretty good. The fans were really into this. I was hoping Real Americans would win, but um, the Usos end up beating Cesaro with a double splash. So they did make Cesaro look strong here. Uh, then they do the Hogan stuff. Then the next match, and I'm probably going to go out of order here or forget something, but 
Oh, Triple H versus Daniel Bryan. That was good. I did like this. And, of course, Daniel Bryan beats Triple H, uh, which kicked all kinds of ass. People were going nuts. Triple H's entrance was badass, too, though. Um, that just looked really cool, showing the close-up of his face on the monitor and everything. And then when they play the game music, like the laser, the light show going off, it was it was just phenomenal. So, <clears throat> they do Triple H versus Daniel Bryan. Daniel Bryan advances. That was a good match. Then I think it was The Shield versus Kane and the New Age Outlaws, which was over very quickly. I think The Shield just hit like a few moves and then beat these guys. Then they did like the double triple powerbomb on the New Age Outlaws. And that was pretty much it. And at this point, they were flying through the show. They flew through this WrestleMania. I was wondering how they're going to fill all this time. I mean, they obviously pulled it off, but... Yeah, it felt like they were flying through the show. So then we had the Battle Royal, I think, for the Andre the Giant Trophy. Um, this was okay. Kind of hard to follow a Battle Royal live. Like, what's going on? You just kind of have to watch the monitor for this. And Cesaro ended up picking up the big show, threw him over the ropes, won the Battle Royal, he had turned on Jack Swagger early in the night and swung him around. And, well, he's the king of swing now. <laughs> so, when he won this, it was just really cool. People were going nuts. Everybody was chanting, we the people. Just an awesome moment. Then, it was Bray Wyatt versus John Cena. Bray Wyatt had this weird, I think a fire-breathing person, like a fire dancer or something was out there. And they had like this voodoo New Orleans intro for him, which was cool, but all, once again, you had to see the monitor for this. It didn't really do anything for me live where I was sitting. I could only imagine what the people in the really high seats were thinking. But Bray Wyatt comes out, and then Cena does his thing. He gets booed like crazy, and they had a match. I thought it was okay. The best part of this match was Cena going for the five-knuckle shuffle, and then he turns around and Bray Wyatt's doing the exorcist walk. That was cool. And Cena ends up beating Bray Wyatt, which uh, I expected. I mean, it's not ideal, but I think everybody kind of expected Cena to win this one. Then it was Brock Lesnar versus The Undertaker. I hope I'm not forgetting any matches here. And... This match, I don't know how this came across on television, but the crowd was dead as fuck for this. I mean, dead. And once the match finally started to pick up a little bit, it was over. No one knew what exactly had happened here. It was just very bizarre. Taker looked drunk throughout the match, and I know now that he was severely injured, but... He, he looked drunk, he went for the last ride, and it looked so weak that I thought Brock Lesnar was actually like getting him in a submission hold. I didn't know that was actually the move. So Taker was in a bad way here, and then Brock hits the F5, I think it was the second F5, and gets the win, and that was it. And you're expecting the Undertaker match to really deliver, and this match was terrible. And apparently that was the plan, was Brock was going to beat him. Taker got injured, yeah, but it didn't change plans or anything. I mean, Taker was going to lose this, and I don't know why they would do that. I guess this was Undertaker's last match. Um, I don't know where they go from here. I thought maybe they could do a rematch next year where Taker wants to face Brock again to kind of redeem himself, but... If they're not going to do that, then this was pretty much it for Taker. And they kind of missed the chance to do a new streak with Brock Lesnar because he's already been beat at WrestleMania. But I thought that would be cool, like a new streak with Brock because he doesn't want to work that many dates and he could do the Undertaker schedule and have a new streak every year with Brock Lesnar. But yeah, like I said, they already beat Brock at WrestleMania. So anyways, the match was terrible. The crowd was dead for it. And nobody liked that finish. People were actually leaving the show because Taker lost, which is ridiculous. But they were very upset. I was confused. 
it was like it didn't look like it was planned. Like they had to take it home really quick because Taker was injured. That's what it looked like to me. And I kept saying, something is wrong here. This does not feel right. And when it said, I still didn't believe it until it said 21 and 1. And I was like, oh my God, I just witnessed the end of the streak. This is like the biggest moment in WWE history. I mean, that's been going longer than anything else. The streak is more important than the title. And that was the end of it. So, why they would end the streak, no idea. I know Taker and Brock are friends. and But if you're going to end the streak and you insist that it ends at WrestleMania 30, why not use someone like Roman Reigns? Somebody that could benefit from it. Brock Lesnar is already a monster. People know that. He does not need to beat the streak. It's He's not going to be there all the time. It's just a waste, but what's done is done. So then we get the main event, or no, we get the Divas Battle Royal, and these poor girls, I felt so bad for them. They got booed more than they usually do because people were so upset about what just happened to Undertaker. And AJ ends up winning the Battle Royal. I think she beat Naomi with the Black Widow. Uh, then we get the main event triple threat match Daniel Bryan, Orton, Batista Orton comes out, he's got a band there playing him to the ring, which was fine the band was good but then Batista comes out and he can't do his fucking pyro, man because of that stupid ass band I wanted to see Batista's pyro I couldn't see it because of the band if they were going to do the band, why not do it after Batista, let Batista come out first Shit didn't make any sense. So Batista just walks out there. And Daniel Bryan comes out. He's injured because Triple H beat his ass after the match earlier. And they had a good match here. They kept Bryan out of it for the most part. And then he makes the comeback. And then they try to screw him over. They're trying to kill Daniel Bryan. Triple H comes back out. He tries to use the sledgehammer. Bryan gets it from I think he hits Triple H with a sledgehammer. Everybody's hitting finishers. Orton... I think Orton Arco's Batista, Daniel Bryan hits Orton with a flying knee, then he makes Batista tap out, some combination like that, but it was really good. There was actually a spot early on where Batista and Orton are working together to take out Daniel Bryan, and they set up the steel steps, and Batista power bombs him, and Orton hits like a neck breaker reverse RKO on Daniel Bryan through the table. I mean, they hit him with everything they had. So for Daniel Bryan to come back and make Batista tap out was just such an awesome moment. The place went nuts. They shot the pyro off, the confetti. It was just the perfect ending to WrestleMania 30, and it saved the show. If Daniel Bryan did not win the title, oh my God, it would have been bad because of what happened with Undertaker earlier. So that was the end. And as he's celebrating and everybody is, you know, watching Daniel Bryan hold up the belts, me and my friend were like, let's go. You know, traffic's going to be a bitch. So we walk out, and I run into DDP. Diamond Dallas Page in the hallway. There's like a few people around him, like three other fans, taking pictures with him. And I run up. I'm like the last person. I say, hey, man, can I get a picture? And he says, yeah, get in here. you got to get it before the elevator comes. And I got it. And it was an awesome picture. I put it on the Facebook page. And I got to meet DDP. It was just awesome. So we leave, and we're trying to get back to the car. And we get lost in New Orleans for two and a half hours. <laughs> and I'm not talking about lost in a car. I'm talking about me and my friend are walking around downtown New Orleans late at night alone. And for two and a half hours, my feet still have blisters from this hell. So everything was perfect up until we went to leave the show. See, we parked at this garage and we were like 0.4 miles away from the Superdome. Now, we didn't really know how to get to the Superdome, so we just followed other fans. So when it was time to get back to the car, we didn't know what the hell we were doing. We asked cab drivers. A cab driver drove us around to try to find our car. Um, we asked a police officer for directions, but we, nobody could help us. We were just completely screwed. It was getting dark. It started to rain. Our phones were dying. And when you leave the Superdome, there's a lot of other fans. Slowly and slowly, there were less and less fans until it was just like fucking us in New Orleans. But eventually, we find a parking garage. I'm trying not to get my hopes up. We've been to so many of them. I'm thinking, is this it? I hit the panic button on the keychain, and the car goes off. 
it was like manna from heaven. <laughs> I mean, we were so excited. We were like, we popped bigger for finding the car than for anything that happened to WrestleMania. It <laughs> was just glorious. But it goes to show you that sometimes you have to go through bad stuff to really appreciate something good. Because the feeling of relief you get is so euphoric that it's almost worth going through the bad shit earlier. If that makes any sense, I don't know. So then we drove back and then we drove all night because I had school on Monday. So I actually ended up missing my first class because we got lost. But I still went to classes after all of this. Like It was just a really long Monday for me. But I have watched Raw, so I'll be back later with my review of that. But um, yeah, as far as WrestleMania 30 goes overall, I didn't really think the show was that good match-wise. The Daniel Bryan matches were good. I love that Cesaro won the Battle Royal. But that Undertaker thing was just so bizarre. It, The whole show just felt really weird. But the Daniel Bryan matches were good. The other matches, the quality of them, even if I like some of the booking decisions, match quality was not very good on this show. So, and when we were lost looking for our car, we actually ran into a guy from, I guess, France, maybe, maybe French-Canadian, something like that. And he was like, man, what did you think of Undertaker? And I said, it was it was crazy. I, I think something was wrong with them, and they had to end the match. And he said, I've been a fan for 22 years because of Undertaker. And when he lost, I walked out. I didn't watch the main event. I was crying. And I was just like, damn, people really love them some fucking Undertaker. But anyways, that's my video on my experience going to WrestleMania 30. I hope you guys have enjoyed it. Leave your thoughts in the comments below, and thanks for watching. Bye. Walking into Fan Access, you see just how big the WWE really is. And I was just dumbfounded, honestly. Um, so starting with Fan Access, we got to Fan Access, and we're walking through the convention center, to get to the actual like area where all the booths and stuff are set up. And you walk in, and they never scanned our tickets by the way, you could pretty much just walk into fan access apparently. Uh, but they have this area where they have these huge banners showing different WWE superstars. Alright guys, I am back from New Orleans where I watched WrestleMania 30. This was my first live WWE show and it was a fantastic experience. Walking into WrestleMania 30, the presentation just blew me away. And we went to Fan Access on Saturday morning, then we went to the Ring of Honor taping, which I'm going to do a separate video on that, and then we went to WrestleMania 30. And just walking into Fan Access, you, you don't really grasp how big this company is until you go to a big show like this. Even people like myself who have been watching damn near their entire lives and it looked kinda silly because you can only put your foot on one rung and the lady was like yeah just put one foot there so I just when she turned around I just did like two <laughs> so it didn't look quite as silly um, but then she was saying something about people following the rules I don't know who cares what are they gonna do uh, but anyway so they had all the superstars there signing autographs. I was there for the Daniel Bryan Hulk Hogan signing, so you can imagine the number of people there. But it wasn't just like people lined up for Hogan and Daniel Bryan. People were lined up for 3MB, for David Otunga. I mean, it was ridiculous. I saw Damian Sandow and seeing like all of this stuff firsthand, like the WWE machine in motion. Actually seeing this just kind of blew me away. So you walk through the shop, tons of merchandise, everybody's buying something. I actually didn't buy anything, uh, but there was just, oh my god, people with their kids and they were buying all this stuff for them. They had a booth set up for the, I think it's Slam City is what they're calling it, and then like the Lego stackers or whatever. Just all of this stuff, just so much freaking stuff. and. They had like the money in the bank ladder where you could act like you're climbing up to reach the briefcase. I'm talking 
your normal guys like Cena, Batista, Lesnar, Taker, but then they had banners for Kali, Eva Marie, people like that. But even those people, you just had this sense looking at these huge banners that they're superstars too. It was like gladiators is the vibe I got from it. You walk through this aisle and you see these huge banners scattered around and it's like these people are like modern day gladiators, like superstars up here. So it was just a really intense thing to actually see this in person having watched the show my entire life and then going